Hey everyone, Eric Dutram here with the latest edition of the Dutram Report, the podcast on ETFs and more. Today we are really focusing on the more part of the podcast as we have a special guest with us today in part two of our closer look at the immunotherapy market. We had Brad Loncar in part one, but now we have Dr. David Chang, the Chief Medical Officer of Kite Pharma, ticker symbol K-I-T-E, in studio to talk to us about ASCO 2017, immunotherapy, and the latest in cancer research. Kite is working on some fascinating stuff in the field, and Dr. Chang explains what we all need to know about this up-and-coming area of the healthcare sector. So, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to send them in to podcast at zax.com, and don't forget to find the Dutram Report on iTunes and give us a review there as well. But stay tuned for my chat with Dr. Chang right after this. All right, thanks for joining us in the studio today, Dr. Chang. First, do you think you can tell us a little bit about your role at Kite and what a chief medical officer does for a biotech company? Yeah, very good question. Chief medical officer you know, is such a fancy title. Yeah, exactly. But really, it's a uh, you know, role that a physician usually takes. And the chief medical officer is responsible for clinical development of investigational therapy. So starting from towards the end of the research that gets done before the compound or new therapy goes into the clinics. From that point on, clinical team will get into the science part of the product development and then start doing clinical testing, which usually goes from phase one, two, and three, where phase two or phase three studies can be used for the registrational purpose. Okay. So does the chief medical officer participate in terms of managing the the studies and and those different phases as well, or is that more handed off to a different setting? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have an, at Kite Pharma, we have an outstanding clinical team. So actually, we coordinate a lot of activities. And sometimes chief medical officer is like a conductor of orchestra doing different things. But at the end, chief medical officer of any technology company is the person who is responsible for all the activities that goes on in the clinical study setting. Okay. So you're in town for the ASCO conference this weekend. I know it's a a big deal. Why do conferences like this matter for companies like Kite? And what are you trying to accomplish this weekend at the conference? There are several meetings, and ASCO is one of the biggest oncology meetings. And this is a gathering of many oncologists, other industry representatives, and also newspaper reporters and analysts and investors. So in a way, this is an opportunity for any companies to highlight what's going on in their company, present the clinical data coming from the studies that they have conducted, and also interact with other colleagues and friends, learning what's going on, and also, you know, new study findings that gets presented for the first time, and how the analysts and investors are reacting to to those information. You know, all these become very relevant in terms of what happens to Kite Pharma or any biotechnology companies. You got to keep up with what's going on, and this is the best opportunity that there is to understand what has happened over the last 12 months in the oncology area. So there's really no other conference that can compare to ASCO, or are there other ones throughout the year that that are also kind of Uh, a big deal? There are many meetings. But when it comes to the clinical data presentation in oncology, there are two major meetings. One is ASCO for usually solid tumors or you know, oncology, and then there is also ASH, American Society of Hematology meeting, which comes towards the end of the year that is more focused on hematology. I would say those two are the major meetings. I don't want to undermine other important meetings that happens throughout the year, but usually ASCO and ASH, those are the the premium ones. Okay. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about Kite and the technologies you guys are working on. So you got TCR and CAR T cell therapy. What do these mean to the average person out there? You know, for all the non biotech analyst listeners that are that might be uh, tuning in. Yeah, it's a fancy words to describe what we're doing. The underlying technology behind TCR or CAR is empowering individuals' immune system so that they can seek out the cancer cells and destroy them more effectively. So what gets done is removing lymphocytes from the patient's blood. And lymphocytes are the immune cells that fight infection 
and also destroy cells that are damaged or are dying. What gets done here is engineering these T cells outside the body using either T cell receptor technology or chimeric antigen receptor technologies and expanding those engineered T cells and giving it back to the patients. So you literally just take someone's blood out and uh, how does that whole process work? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, five, ten years ago, I mean, this would have been more like a science fiction. Yeah. But science fiction is becoming a reality. So many people out there, you know, have experiences of donating platelets. The same process gets used to collect the lymphocytes. And then after that, it goes to a central manufacturing facility where everything gets handled. And then after a certain time, about two to three weeks after, the cells will go back to the clinics. And at that stage, the cells are more like, you know, people who are undergoing bone marrow transplantations, the same type of cells in oh. appearance. And it gets infused back to the patients. And just getting that little bit is enough to more or less jumpstart someone's immune system? Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, that is, you know, what is so amazing about the cell therapy, especially the T-cells even the small amount when they're given back to the patients, as these T cells recognize the targets, they undergo proliferation. They expand in numbers. So in many ways, unlike all other therapies that has been there before, this is a really living therapy. The T cells are living cells that are engineered to recognize cancer cells and destroy them. And that's exactly what happens in the body. The recognition allows the multiplication of T cells, and with a large number of T cells, they are more effective in killing the cancer cells. Okay. Now, are these technologies more useful on certain types of cancers uh, as opposed to other ones that are out there? Right now, these technologies could be used for any types of cancer because at the end, the T cells are the natural cells in the body, natural immune systems that will seek out and destroy uh, damaged or mutated cells. So what is being done with a chimeric antigen receptor or T-cell receptor is really harnessing the power of the lymphocytes, T-cells, and using them more effectively to kill the cancer cells. Let's say, for example, leukemia or something like that. Or mm -hmm. Is it more targeted at those types of cancers or like a brain cancer type thing? Is there some sort of distinction between the, the various groups? So right now, this is, uh, I would say, chapter one of cellular therapy. So a lot of products that are being developed tends to be more skewed toward hematologic malignancies. But underlying biology and technology would allow the same type of therapies to be used in solid tumors down the line. The main distinction is for each tumor types, you have to find the right target that allows the lymphocytes to recognize the cancer cells. And for hematologic cancers like leukemia, lymphoma, those targets could be identified with relative ease. For solid tumors, that gets a little bit more challenging, and that's what's taking some additional work that many companies are, including Kite Pharma, is working on. Okay. Now, are there any risks to this sort of approach in terms of getting the T cells out of someone's body putting it back in, in in this different form? You know, with any new therapy, any investigational therapy, there is risk, risk of unknown adverse events. And, you know, that really happens in almost every case of drug development. What's really needed is careful drug development to ensure the risks are managed. And also during the clinical development, coming up with appropriate management protocols to address the risks, adverse events. So other than what I would consider as a standard risk of any drug development, you know, I would say CAR T therapy is not any different than any other therapy that has been, you know, before us. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of talk about chemotherapy in the past, and that's kind of been the main focus for cancer treatment. But, you know, it seems like immunotherapy is kind of catching on now. What has changed in the past three to five years to make this possible? You know, it just seems like something that's really new for the, the world of cancer care. It's in the efforts of a lot of people that's really culminating at this point. 
I would say 10 years ago, immuno-oncology was a term that nobody spoke about. And over the last five, six years, with the entry of drugs that harness the immune system and people realizing what can be done with that, I think with that, you know, the interest in immuno-oncology has grown significantly. Is there and, anything from the technology side that's, that's yeah. changed to make this possible? On the technology side, you know, the initial discovery of chimeric antigen receptor technology, that came in early 1990s. And what has happened over the last 15, 20 years is refining that pioneering science to something that can be used in the clinics. So that was on the science side and also in the manufacturing side, the techniques of growing and expanding the T-cells outside the body has improved significantly. And in many ways, it's different things all converging together. Right. That's allowing the, the cellular therapy to be where it is right now. Yeah. Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the results that you're seeing from this new type of therapy for cancer. Why is this such a revolution, you think, compared to some of the treatments we've had in the past? Kite Pharma is working on a drug called Axicel. The long name for that is Exicaptazine Xylelucel, but we call it for, for obvious, brevity, yeah, Axicel, for, for, for obvious, obvious reasons. reasons yeah. Yes. So we have studied that in 101 patients with refractory aggressive non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and we presented the data a couple months ago. And what we saw in that study is four out of five patients responding to the therapy, so 80% of the patients responding. And also half of responding patients having complete remission, meaning that there's no longer ev any evidence of cancer. Oh, wow. So another way to describe that is the existing therapy right now gives about 7 to 8% complete response rate. What the exocaptazin cell was able to do is essentially improving the complete remission rate by you know, close to sevenfold. Wow. Something like that has never happened in the oncology space, and that's the excitement, number one. And another thing that people are learning, and certainly we are following the patients who are treated, what is very evident is that these responses are very durable. Some patients can remain in complete remission for more than a year. And in fact, about half the patients that we have treated still are in ongoing response, which really makes the therapy very exciting. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Are there any other cancers that your company or you, other ones out there are working on? Uh, oh, I think this? this is really in an area that's gaining momentum. Kite Pharma, in addition, uh, developing different engineer cell therapies to address multiple myeloma or AML, which is another type of leukemia, as well as uh, solid tumors. And there are other companies using the same technology, developing cell therapies to address different cancers. So where do you think the world of cellular therapy is headed in the next couple of years? Do you think it's just going to be this progression towards trying to tackle the solid tumors, or is it going to be more focused on some of the blood cancers, uh, at least in the near term? As I said earlier, I think we're in chapter one of cellular therapy. And the best analogy that I can talk about is monoclonal antibodies. When it was first introduced, and that was almost 30 years ago, there were a lot of skepticisms about how far monoclonal antibody could go. But now we know that monoclonal antibodies are not just used in oncology, but also to treat hypercholesterolemia or bone diseases or many other inflammatory diseases. So drawing that analogy, where the cellular therapy is right now, which is mostly in oncology, I think this is just the beginning. Over the next few years, the field will continue to grow and expand into other therapeutic areas, including inflammatory diseases or many other sort of rare diseases where engineering of the cells could have a big impact on the course of the disease. Yeah. Anything else you want people out there listening to know about either Kite or the world of immunotherapy? Is there, do you have a, a good source where people can maybe learn more about this up and coming process? So, you know, 2017 in many ways is a very special year. I mean, what used to be investigational therapy, now two companies, Kite Pharma and a Novartis, 
has applied for the marketing authorization in the U.S. So two different cellular products addressing leukemia and lymphoma could enter into the marketplace in 2017. Certainly with that, there has been a lot of news coverage, both in lay newspapers as well as special journals. And frankly, a lot of company websites also provide good primers on what cellular therapy is like. So I would direct you know, audience to that kind of uh, different venues. Okay, doctor, thanks for coming on. This is a great look at the world of immunotherapy and what is changing in this fast moving market. Great to have you here in the studio. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk about immunotherapy and cellular therapy and have a great day. All right, everyone. That was Dr. David Chang of Kite Pharma for part two of our immunotherapy special. Definitely go over to kitepharma.com to check out more about their revolutionary process and more about how this technology works too. And special thanks to Brad Loncar of Loncar Funds for helping to set this one up. Brad is the godfather of immunotherapy and has an index that is the basis for the Loncar Immunotherapy ETF, CNCR. Well, hope you enjoyed this edition of the Duchin Report. Make sure to tune in for more interviews and discussions on the world of exchange-traded funds in the future. And for my thoughts on the ETF world, make sure to go on over to Zax.com and check out the ETF Investor Service, which includes my top picks and commentary on the markets. And don't forget to find and review the Dutrum Report on iTunes. And if there are any topics you want us to discuss, feel free to reach out at podcast at zax.com, my Twitter page at Eric Dutrum, and leave us a comment on Facebook too. And be on the lookout for a new edition of the Dutrum Report each and every Thursday. But until then, for zax.com, I'm Eric Dutrum.